European Parliament in April this year published a written declaration calling on the World Health Organization to recognize electrical hypersensitivity as a medical condition. There are so many organisations in the world attempting to address this that are very concerned in government agencies throughout the world, including the Council of Europe, the European Union Environmental Agency, the International Commission for Electromagnetic Safety, the Russian National Committee on Non-Ionising Radiation Protection. As Don mentioned, there's been an enormous amount of studies from the Russians on microwave radiation and its impact on human health the International Commission for Electromagnetic Safety. The German federal government officially in 2007 stated to its citizens that you should not be using wireless technology in your homes or schools and we strongly recommend the use of hardwired connections because we are concerned about the impact this is having on our population. The American Academy of Environmental Medicine as well. Electromagnetic sensitivity is associated with a variety of symptoms Many people have many of these symptoms, and of course, because it is li a literally a syndrome, um, you will find that the, the symptoms will vary a lot depending on your genetic predisposition. Certainly the most common are fatigue that's not alleviated by rest, that persists particularly during the day. Headache, sleep disturbances, there's a lot of research on its impact on sleep and neurotransmission and melatonin reduction. Flu-like symptoms, heart and circulatory problems, chest pain, shortness of bl breath, blood pressure changes, which is used as a pathological marker by the UK, Germany, and of course Sweden. Arrhythmias, nosebleeds, um, alterations in circulation. In the brain, dizziness, confusion, lack of concentration, memory impairment, dyslexia. I'm concerned at the number of children whose homes I audit, who suddenly cannot read very well, who have difficulties learning, who get their words jumbled up, but significantly improve their ability to learn when they're away from school, away from the Wi-Fi and on school holidays. Earaches, tinnitus. Tinnitus seems to be very common, especially with smart meters. Dry, gritty eyes, ticks, irritation, pressure behind the eyes. Skin rash, a crawling sensation, dry skin, irritation, lumps, itchy brown sunspots, almost by, almost by many clients described as being electric, electrified, etc. on the skin. Numbness, weakness, a lot of fibromyalgic symptoms, restless legs, spasms, tremors, pain in the jaw and the teeth. Sensitivities, once people become electrically sensitive, it is greatly unfortunate that the systems involved, the central nervous system, the liver, the immune system, that they become chemically sensitive. What then becomes a spice is they become sensitive to things they would never have become sensitive to before. So suddenly the perfume they used to wear for 20 years they can no longer tolerate. Suddenly reading a newspaper becomes an issue because they're reacting to the VOCs from the ink that are coming off the newspaper. Sen chemical sensitivity and electrical sensitivity are really become one and the same disorder and it becomes critical to be able to address those parameters when we're treating patients with electrical hypersensitivity. Chronic health effects. Long data of research to indicate its relationship to childhood leukaemia. As I indicated in 79, Wertheimer and Leeper were the first to make a connection between exposure to high level magnetic fields and children with leukaemia. Since then, there have been enormous amount of research from various countries, um, as, and here are just four examples. Breast cancer, um, a lot of research now indicating that high level exposure beyond 15 milligauss, um, especially in a workplace associated with an increased risk of breast cancer. Brain tumours, I've already mentioned. There are unusual forms of tumours, acoustic neuromas and gliomas, and a lot of this research is coming from Sweden and now from the European Union. These tumours take 15 to 25 years. In many ways, I see we are the canaries in the mine because we've literally blanketed our entire planet, our entire built environment, and the one area where our children could come home and rest and sleep at night is suddenly blanketed with radio frequencies and potentially magnetic fields that could affect their health. By the time the authorities acknowledge this, it will be too late. We can't wait 
to this, this approach where we wait till the disease occurs. We need to start looking at this. And because of the fact that the data is starting to show that it's not safe, we need to implement the precautionary principle. That is, to, to ensure and start looking at the ways to reduce our exposure or get rid of the source. The other one is neurodegenerative diseases like amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or Lou Gehrig syndrome. Alzheimer's disease, very strong correlations between exposure to long-term exposure to low levels to Alzheimer's. The brain cancer incidence has risen by 35% in the ACT New South Wales between 2000 and 2008. And a professor who instigated the study has serious grave concerns about the impact of mobile phones, which uses the same frequency as smart meters, and its impact on uh, the neurological or the brain. So who is susceptible to electro-hypersensitivity? If you look at the data from the Nordic countries, and certainly from my experience, I run a college in building biology, um, and what we do is we train people how to do EMF testing, amongst other things. And we go into people's homes to see what's going on. And what we're finding is that generally people who become sensitive to this have a high, have exposure to either high levels or to low levels over a very long period of time. The second predisposition is exposure to chemicals. Many people can be exposed to pesticides if they've had their house sprayed or some form of chemicals, and then they start to become sensitive to electricity or electro, uh, electromagnetic fields. The third one is heavy metals in the body. Many of these people are acting as antennas to electromagnetic fields. The amount of people who get orthopedic surgery with titanium implants who suddenly, instantly become electrically sensitive is such a concern because they are literally, their bodies acting as antennas to these radio frequencies. And this is something that the medical fraternity needs to implement and investigate immediately. Amalgam fillings, any other types of heavy metals, people who are susceptible to this, as indicated by the evidence from a lot of these Nordic countries, are indicating that they have higher levels of lead and mercury. Of course, lead can come from paint. If your house was built before the 1965, your paint is likely to contain 50% lead. Now, we know any lead content in a child's body will cause a reduction in learning and IQ. It is a serious health concern, and yet the amount of times people move into an old home and renovate it, exposing pregnant women and children to the lead dust is horrific. I really feel it's mandatory that medical doctors now start checking for lead in all our children because this could also be a precursor to their exposure or sensitivity to electromagnetic fields. Surgical metal implants, as I indicated, a lot of the titanium implants could make people act as antennas. The fifth one is epigenetic factors. Atopic individuals are individuals who are likely to suffer from allergies. There's evidence to indicate people who have hay fever, food-related allergies, etc. Goodness knows children, you know, with the whole peanut allergy and the epidemic and food allergies, are more susceptible to electromagnetic field exposure because the same mechanisms in the body are involved. Their metabolic rate is significantly increased. The respiratory rate is increased. They are uniquely susceptible to electromagnetic fields. Pregnant women. The sixth one are children. Children have thinner skulls. They are so much more susceptible to electromagnetic fields. The elderly, the immunocompromised, and of course, people who already have electro-hypersensitivity. Recognition of EHS would ensure full compliance with the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities of 2007. It is for this reason that Sweden has, um, and Canada have acknowledged this as a disease. It is against, I feel, our constitution and Australia should comply with the UN Convention and for no other reason be able to e exist and acknowledge electrical hypersensitive patients as clients who require uh, immediate assistance. So where are the sources of radio frequencies in your home? And I feel those who have electrical hypersensitivities, um, of course, not just the smart meter, there are very other areas you need to address. What we're finding as building biologists are things like radio frequencies, external sources can include the mobile phone tower, radio and TV towers, the neighbourhood's uh, neighbour's smart meter, the router, the cordless phone, mobile phone, it is a concern that people living in multi-storey apartments now, especially if they're uh, built from concrete tilt slab or if they have metal frames, these metal frames are allowing these radio frequencies to bounce back into the home environment and create hot spots. 
The internal sources of radio frequencies are things like smart meters, and of course that's why we're here today. We don't have a choice and we need to. The other internal sources of these frequencies that use the same type of frequencies as smart meters are Wi-Fi, WiMAX, wireless routers, mobile phones, cordless phones are almost as bad as the mobile phones. Wireless baby monitors I am seriously concerned about because the amount of power output that we measure from a wireless uh, baby monitor is very similar to what we get from a mobile phone tower. Wireless security systems. So in order to address this, we need to start looking at all of the sources of radio frequencies and to start switching things off. Sources of electro, electric and magnetic fields are created from the building wiring and appliances. Now, most of the time these will never be an issue, but they do become an issue if you sleep or spend time in an area where there's a high magnetic field. So most of the time your building wiring will not be a problem. I certainly choose to live with electricity, but you know, most of the time this isn't going to be an issue. With people who are electrically hypersensitive, what they're doing intuitively is moving their bed away from the wall and moving it into the middle of the room because the electric field can actually emanate 1.2 metres into the room. Electric blankets, huge no. Even when they're not heating, they can emit very high electric fields if they're switched on at the wall and increase your body voltage significantly. These are the things you need to address if you are electrically sensitive. Water beds with their motor generate high electric and magnetic fields. Appliances are only going to be in a problem if they're on. So things like having your bed butting up against the wall of the other side of the fridge or the meter box or the smart meter will be a real problem because it's, the fridge particularly goes on and off all night so it generates high magnetic fields intermittently during the night. This is a real problem, especially also for things like an inverter from a photovoltaic or solar panel. Inverters emit very high fields. So it's interesting the amount of audits we're doing as building biologists where we walk into homes and this baby or child is not sleeping because their cot is butting up against the other side of a fridge or an inverter or a meter box or a smart meter because of these frequencies. The other concern, of course, is compact fluorescent light bulbs are a nightmare for people with electrical hypersensitivity. They generate UV, radio frequencies, electric and magnetic fields. In my book, I go into detail as to which types of lighting you should consider if you have electrical hypersensitivity. We all go on about this green smart and green energy efficiency. You know, it, you know this green washing that we go into at the adverse effect of our homes is just not on. You know, we have eight star energy rating buildings nowadays, which is like living in a plastic bag. And as a result of this, we introduce all these frequencies, the adverse health effects, we really don't know its impact on human health.